Hello and welcome to Applied Imagery. We are pleased to announce the release of Quick Terrain Modeler version 8.1.1. This release enhances tools that were introduced in 8.1.0, such as feature extraction, GRG creation, and imagery streaming. In addition, version 8.1.1 introduces one big new tool for communication analysis, the Horizon Analysis Tool. Let's jump right in and take a look. We enhanced the feature classification and extraction tool we introduced in version 8.1.0 based on user feedback. The tool now offers users more precise control over how it works. Classification rules allow users to decide which existing classification values get retained or overwritten. This is important when you start with existing classification values that you want to keep and may only want Quick Train Modeler to change if it finds buildings leaving other existing classification features alone. Quick Terrain Modeler lets you preview the existing classifications before you start, then make those decisions. The Building Centroid option directs Quick Terrain Modeler to automatically assign each building center with a single point and a numbered marker. This is a huge time saver and makes cataloging buildings quick and efficient. One of the first things you'll notice once you run the Feature Extraction tool is the Quick Terrain Modeler now performs a check of data density prior to classification extraction and warns you if the data density appears problematic and optionally displays a data density map to evaluate the problem areas. Additionally, the classification and feature extraction tool can now be limited to selection areas which saves processing time if you only want to extract buildings over a small area. The new tool in the bag is the Horizon Analysis Tool, which provides users with a graphical, interactive display of the highest objects or terrain surrounding a user from any given point, such as a marker. The primary purpose of the Horizon Analysis Tool is to evaluate visibility to communications platforms, such as satellites, in cases where terrain or other features block line-of-sight access. The horizon is displayed as a line on a 2D graph. The horizontal axis represents the azimuth, or heading in degrees, from the point, and the vertical axis represents the elevation, or inclination in degrees, to the object on the horizon. The intent is to forecast visibility between a stationary antenna at the marker location and any other known antenna position and determine what objects may potentially obstruct the visibility. Green lines represent a clear line of sight, whereas red indicates the horizon blocks the line of sight. As for the GRG tool, we received lots of feedback from our users, which was greatly appreciated, and we made the appropriate tweaks to the GRG interface. For this latest update, we added the ability to simultaneously label the grids with MGRS coordinates and the desired letter or number, making the GRG product even more useful than ever. We changed the confusing buttons on Create Vector and Create Traces on Export to checkboxes to alleviate the confusion when the action occurs. Also, when using the MGRS labeling, the label rounds down to fewer digits when possible to help with readability. For our government version and DoD users, we added a new plugin to enable users to search and retrieve data directly from the grid portal. Called GQ version 200, it can be accessed through the search tool or via the plugins menu, and you can verify it is installed on the About menu under About QT Software. Another powerful yet subtle enhancement in version 8.1.1 is the imagery streaming tweak. Imagery or texture streaming was introduced in version 8.1.0. It enabled a constant sharpening of large imagery files as users zoomed and panned around the scene. Version 8.1.1 builds on these techniques and attempts to strike a better balance between system resources that are simultaneously being used on 3D rendering and imagery streaming, with the version 8.1.1 priority being placed on 3D rendering. This version will take advantage of multiple CPU cores, multi-threading the imagery tasks whenever possible and beneficial. Users can still control the number of streaming cores in the Help menu under System Resources window. There are many more under the hood tweaks and enhancements in Quick Terrain Modeler version 8.1.1, too many to mention here. At Applied Imagery, we encourage feedback and make it our priority to make Quick Terrain Modeler better every chance we can. We look forward to hearing from you. If you would like further information or have questions, please visit our website or shoot us an email. Thanks for watching.